So, one of the biggest basketball debates is who's the better player, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Now before I even begin, I want everyone to know that by me making this argument, I am not trying to say that one of the all-time greats, Michael Jordan, is a bad player. These two are arguably the two best basketball players of all time, but they are from two different eras with two different styles of play. So trying to compare these two is like trying to tell you that red is a better color than green. Although it is widely seen that Jordan is the greatest of all time, my goal in this video is to persuade you that LeBron is better than Jordan. But before some of you call me crazy, here are some credible people, including some NBA legends, who think LeBron is better than Jordan, such as Shannon Sharp, Isaiah Thomas, JJ Redick, and Oscar Robertson. LeBron's me, making a great argument to, to be, you know, one of the, the greatest, if not the greatest. Let me ask you. LeBron James is the greatest player ever. That's that's what I say. I, I Greater than Michael the, Jordan. Yeah, I, I think so. You cannot tell me in a one-on-one -on -one game now that LeBron James want to dominate Mike. LeBron is not as good as Michael Jordan? Come on. Look, LeBron is, I think, the greatest player to ever play. So are you saying LeBron is better than Michael Jordan? I would pick LeBron James. But what's most shocking is that even Michael Jordan's former teammate, Scottie Pippen, the man that helped Mike win all those rings, said this about LeBron. Michael Jordan is probably the greatest scorer to ever play in the game. But I may go as far as to say LeBron James may be the greatest player to ever play the game because he's so potent offensively not, that not only can he score at will, but he keeps everybody involved. And you have to be on your P's and Q's on defense because uh, no guy on the basketball court is not a threat to score when LeBron James is out there. Before I continue, give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more videos. Moving on, the first thing I want to point out is that a lot of people want to use the number of championships to justify why Jordan is better than LeBron. Yes, it's true, Jordan does have six rings compared to LeBron's three rings, but the amount of rings does not define a player's greatness. Am I expected to believe that players such as Vince Carter, Allen Iverson, and Karl Malone were not as great as they were because they never won a championship? Let's hear what seven-time champ Robert Ory has to say about this. You know, they measure great players by how many championships they win. win. It's the stupidest thing ever. That's like saying Karl Malone and Charles Barkley and Patrick Malone are not great players. Just say you want to judge a guy's greatness by the number of championships they win. They're idiots. You know, the irony is you have more championships than almost anybody. Yeah, that's like me saying I'm the greatest basketball player ever. I'm the ninth greatest which, basketball player ever. Which? Aside from that, the expression Jordan wins 6-0 in the finals seems to get thrown around a lot. And I think the media has a lot to do with that. I'm talking about a six-time champion who's never, ever, ever lost an NBA Finals. He never lost in the Finals. He's undefeated in championship. Michael had no NBA Finals losses. Michael Jordan won six NBA Finals and never lost one. LeBron has three and nine trials. Nope. LeBron is still three and six. LeBron James has lost six NBA Finals. Sometimes statistics can be skewed to favor someone. This is one of those times. I can show you a stat like this that favors Jordan. Or I could show you something like this that favors LeBron. The statement that Jordan wins 6-0 in the finals is a very misleading statement, and here's why. So 3-5 and five doesn't mean anything. I'm more impressed with eight finals than I am with the record in the finals. I'm if with you, Doc. If he was 0 for 8 in finals, that would still be an amazing achievement. That's like going to eight Super Bowls. LeBron made it to the finals nine times and lost six of them. And those losses keep getting put over his head, penalizing him rather than praising him while Michael Jordan's seven early exits out of the playoffs are never counted against him. This logic tells us that losing in the finals is somehow worse than losing in the first three rounds. So all those times LeBron lost in the finals, was he better off just not making the playoffs at all? Just so everyone could say that he went three for three in the finals? Absolutely not. The fact that a player can go to the finals so many times is a great accomplishment and should be commended. I'd hate to use a meme to help my point, but I felt like it was suitable and I'm sure some of you have seen it before. You can't lose in the finals if you never make the finals, but I think we can all agree it's better to reach the finals and give yourself a shot at the championship than not to reach the finals at all. You know what? Could someone back me up on this? Michael Jordan, six and all in the finals, I agree, yes. LeBron, three and six in the finals, I agree. But what I do look at is six and three being nine. You know how hard it is to get to the finals? The NBA is full of NBA players. These guys are the best basketball players in the world competing. It takes a team to win the championship. The best teams win every year. It's just how it is. One man can't win by itself. The sad part is y'all are degrading LeBron like he's not that good because he's not winning against a team that is better. Like, what's worse, you degrading LeBron or degrading the Warriors? 
You have four future Hall of Famers on that team. I wonder how they feel to see you talk about LeBron in this manner as if they're not better than LeBron by himself. LeBron's team is clearly not a better team than the Warriors. So that is why the 6-0 talk is a misleading statement and degrades LeBron when we should all realize that making it to the final so many times is a great achievement. So, uh, Stephen A., I think you owe LeBron an apology. We are religiously unfair to LeBron James. Myself and Breach. Myself included. But Skip, how many teams did Jordan face in the final that we say were better than the Warriors? Good question, Shannon, which brings up what's probably my most important point. Now, we all know that one player can't win on his own. Basketball is a team sport, and it requires everyone's contributions to win the chip. So I want to compare LeBron's team and Jordan's team throughout the years. Unlike Jordan, LeBron was drafted number one overall to the worst team and wasted seven years of his career carrying that Cavaliers team, somehow managing to get to the finals one time. Let's be fair to LeBron on here. He did drag the 2007 My Cleveland God. Cavaliers to the NBA Finals. That is one of the most incredible feats that anybody's <laughs> pulled off. Yeah, his back must have really been hurting from carrying that team. Jordan only took three years until he was accompanied by seven-time NBA All-Star Scottie Pippen and defensive stars Charles Oakley and Horace Grant. GOAT don't need help. I say, well, Skip, LeBron needs some help. Not if you're the GOAT. Well, if Michael Jordan is the GOAT, why did he need Scottie Pippen? He got swept every time he went to the playoffs without Scottie Pippen. For the rest of their careers, both LeBron and Jordan obviously had great teammates, but Jordan most definitely had more help. Shannon Sharp, tell the people at home why. I saw LeBron James leave Cleveland still, yep. and they get the lottery. I see LeBron James go to Miami, they go to the finals four straight times, they win two. Mm -hmm. I see him leave, and with two Hall of Fame players, mm -hmm. they miss the playoffs. Now, I see LeBron go back, they go to four more finals, they win one, mm -hmm. he leaves, and now they're the worst team in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan leaves the Bulls, and they win 55 games without him. Now, I've been hearing a lot about how LeBron had a meltdown in the finals against the Mavericks. But really, that's just a discredit to the great championship team that is the Mavericks. I think people just forgot how impossible it was to guard Dirk Nowitzki. This same Mavericks team that beat the Miami Heat 4-2 in the NBA Finals mm -hmm. swept mm. the two-time defending champs, mm. Lakers. They wow. also blew the doors off Kevin Durant, James Harden, Russell Westbrook mm. in five games. But see, we got to give it some context now. Mm. So are you telling me, Andrew Bynum, Paul Gasol, Kobe Bryant. How could Kobe Bryant get swept? Now back to Shannon's question. LeBron achieved the impossible by defeating the best team statistically with a 73-9 season record. That same summer, Kevin Durant joins this team and becomes what I consider the most unstoppable team in NBA history. If we were to put Jordan and LeBron shoes in this scenario, there is no way he would beat this team. I got one guy. Do you realize Draymond is the fourth best player on their roster? He's averaging 11 11 and 8. Hold He's going to be Shaq, when Jordan that retired. Play? When Jordan yes. retired. No! <laughs> yes. They would run laps around that Bulls team, yo. Are you kidding okay. me? The next thing I want to point out is that LeBron can stuff the stat sheet better than Jordan, as well as being more capable of playing and guarding any position. And I'm going to let my friends over at Sports Science cover this one. What do you got for us? Here's why he can excel at every position on the court. First, quickness. The average player can cover the length of the court with 13 strides. LeBron can do it with just nine. And we've clocked him at over 20 miles per hour. When passing, LeBron can get off a 40 mile an hour dart in under two tenths of a second. That's twice as fast as the average NFL quarterback releases a pass. Next, technique. LeBron typically releases a shot at more than nine feet off the ground. That's higher than a stop sign. If a 6'9 defender is only three feet away, he can't even get a hand within a foot of the ball. And finally, range. The average NBA center is 6'11", with a max vertical leap of about 31 inches, creating a range of about 3,600 cubic feet. LeBron is three inches shorter, but his estimated 40-plus inch max vert actually gives him a range that's more than 5% greater than the average center. 
This helped LeBron this past regular season snag more than 74% of rebounds per opportunity. Thank you, and well said. So that's why LeBron is capable of guarding anyone. And as far as Jordan goes, I don't care how good Jordan is. Him being 6'6", six six, 205 pounds would not be able to guard 7 foot centers who weigh 250 pounds. Although LeBron doesn't normally guard the other team's best player, he could easily switch off picks and guard anyone he wants. Now I'm not saying that LeBron could guard some of the best centers such as Joel Embiid or a Shaquille O'Neal type of player, but he most likely could effectively guard an average center. LeBron of course also has the speed and strength to guard any other position. And for anyone who doesn't believe he can guard point guards who are too quick, here is LeBron guarding Stephen Curry in the 2016 NBA Finals. James on Curry. James guarding Curry. Curry steps back. Can't get it to fall. Bogut the rebound and put back. We wind down the first half. And I like what LeBron just did. Had an opportunity. Got Richard Jefferson off of Steph Curry. And he defended it. About a four second difference. Shot clock, game clock. Curry. Not that time. Mark, sometimes we forget what a great defensive player LeBron James is. In transition, so you got to take care of the basketball. Curry turns it over. J.R. Smith fakes, throws it back to Jefferson, into James. Thompson making him rush. Again, forcing him. Finals, he's got to play better. Turns it over. James keeps his dribble somehow. Irving back to James. Oh. Defended. Ball knocked away by Barnes. Iguodala ahead to Curry. Shumpert. In pursuit, blocked by James. It's Bedlam here in Cleveland. Curry blocked by James. As far as the stat stuffing goes, the numbers should speak for themselves. Sure, Michael Jordan had more points than LeBron, but LeBron simply was just more versatile. He could rebound, assist, block shots. Hey, um, could someone back me up on this? Oh. LeBron James is a better basketball player. Better and basketball. here is why. He fills the stats up across the board, night in and night out. You're talking about a kid who can easily average a triple-double if he chooses to. But this guy beats you at everything. He rebounds, he assists, he gets everybody involved, and he, he's bigger, he's faster, he's stronger is the more versatile defender, can guard all five positions. Yeah, the one guy scores a few more, but uh, geez, I got in the right. No other player is 28, eight and six for a playoff. There's really, you know, very few players. I'm trying to think if there's anybody besides LeBron uh, that has had that combination of speed and size and athleticism and strength. And most importantly for me, he could shoot at a higher percentage. Points aren't everything. See, if I told you that Russell Westbrook had a game where he put up 30 points, Pretty good, right? But then what if I told you it took him 32 shots to score that 30 points? Not so good anymore. He shot 34% from the field and missed 21 shots, not to mention his team also lost that game. So putting up points isn't everything if you can't score efficiently. Jordan did shoot efficiently, but LeBron did it better. So that is my argument as to why LeBron James is the best player over Michael Jordan. Thank you for watching. Whether or not you agree or disagree with me, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and give me a like as well.